Hello and welcome back to the channel. After an extended absence, we are back today with the Billion Pound Experiment. Apologies for the absence over the last week and a half or so. Uh, Covid throughout the family and then hospitalised last weekend meant that even when I was out of hospital, I just couldn't get the energy together to put any videos together. So we're back today and we'll be back tomorrow and then all being well, we'll be back Monday to Friday, back at Leicester Road and then back on the weekends with the What If and the Galactico Rebuild saves. So the club today were founded in 2005 and they were founded due to opposition to Malcolm Glazer's takeover of Manchester United. I am of course talking about FC United of Manchester. Uh, they got three consecutive promotions and then get a fourth to get into the National League North. They've since been relegated to the Northern Premier League and that is where we find them in this database today in the Northern Premier League. We're going to give them a billion pounds and hopefully by the end of the 25 year spell they can be mixing up in the Premier League with Manchester City and the club from which they were founded, Manchester United. So here we have it, FC United of Manchester. There's the money, £1 billion in the bank balance, £500 million transfer budget, £5 million in the wage budget. Sugar Daddy on the front end. We're going to have a quick look at the facilities, one star uh, training facility, one star youth facility, two and a half star silver stars actually for junior coaching and youth recruitment. That is something that we'll keep an eye on as this um, 25 years progresses because these clubs do spend a lot of money on their facilities. Uh, as we saw with Paris, they had pretty much maxed out facilities by the time we got to the end of the 25 years. Much to the detriment actually of their on the field stuff because they weren't in the top, five, top flight of uh, France. As regularly as they should have been. Uh, 4,400 seat stadium, Broadhurst Park, they're built in 2015. That is something else we're going to have to keep an eye on to see if they expand on the stadium. So let's get into it. We're going to go 10 years off the bat and let's see where FC United and Manchester end up. So here we are on the first step of the journey in July of 2031, 10 years in the future. And FC United of Manchester are in Skybet League 2. We can have a quick look in the bottom corner here. So in the 21-22 season, they finished second, gaining promotion. And then they got promotion from the Vanarama National League North in fourth place. Spent a number of years in the Vanarama National League, came third, then ninth, then second. Finally went up, finishing seventh, actually, in the playoffs. And since then, they've finished 15th, 5th and 4th. So they've had two playoffs in League 2. We'll have a quick look at those straight away and see what they did. So they finished 4th. Wimbledon got promoted that season. They say that this is the easiest one to get out of because there's uh, four spots to get promoted to League One. Obviously, they're not finding it that easy at the moment. This season here, they went out to Wrexham on penalties in the semi-final. And the year before that, 5-0 to Tramia, who went through an extra time against Stevenage. So, not the end of the world. Wrexham didn't go up that season either, so they went... Um, out to a team that went up in Tramia and then out to Wrexham who lost to Wimbledon in the final there. Now something that you may have noticed before I came off this screen, um, media prediction first, I got distracted by something else there, media prediction first for this coming season in Skybet League 2, training facilities up to 3.5 star, youth facilities up to 3.5 star, junior coaching is up to 5 silver star so that is nearly at a gold star and 4.5 star uh, silver stars youth recruitment as well so they're nearly at 1 gold star there. No manager either, so we're going to have a quick look at what's happened manager-wise. Uh, if that screen wants to load for me, there we go. So, since the start of this save, Neil Reynolds was there when we started this save off. He was there for six, six and a half years, he got sacked. Uh, Robbie Nielsen came in two years, he got sacked. Jamie Mackey took over for 12 days as a caretaker and Nathan Jones has just been sacked just shy of four years in the job. I'm guessing him not getting promotion this season was the final straw and that has seen him get sacked. And I wonder who's going to be next for them now because the job is now available. I wonder who they're going to be able to get in next. Now onto the bit that I look forward to the most and that is the transfers over the last 10 years. We're going to quickly sift through this because we normally do it in 5 year spells. This year is a 10 year one. Uh, so we're going to quickly sift through it. 5k spent in the first season, not a lot there, no money brought in. Second season, 16 and a quarter thousand pounds. 
I think there's going to be nothing of any note here. 6k on Charlie Rowan from Oxford City. Then they spent 26k, so it's getting a little bit more. 11.25k for Joel Senior from Barnet. Uh, he is no longer from Manchester as well. Now the manager at Sirencester. Um, going on, 125,000 spent in the 24-25 season. 120 of that spent on Jake Hall from Port Vale. He is a centre back. He's now at Darlington. Uh, they brought in four and a half. Four thousand eight hundred pounds there. Then one point two million. I saw the big, uh, the big bar graph up here. So where did that money get spent? One point one million on Ricky J Jones from Peterborough. Who's now at Shrewsbury. Uh, brought for one point one million. Sold him for thirty k. Didn't really do a job for them. Nine goals, twelve goals, eleven goals, four goals, two goals. I mean, he did go through the Vanarama National and Skybet League too, but he hasn't done a good enough job, especially considering I'm guessing they broke the transfer record to get him in, one point one million pounds, and he hasn't really delivered. Joel Senior there has just been sold for sixteen, thirteen point two five. Sorry, I got that mixed up with uh, the guy above him for sixty k. Go on, three hundred twenty five thousand spent there, bringing back in forty. 375 spent there, bringing back in 150. 125,000 spent on Poku from Carlisle. Didn't bring much back in there. 275,000 spent, 425,000 brought back in. Charlie McNeil sold for 325, rising to 375 to Plymouth. So who did they spend the money on here? Billy Copeland from MK Dons for 160,000 pounds. And then coming on to last season, 325k spent again, 220k brought in. Let's see where the big money went here. £210,000 on Jack Scott from Notts County. We're going to have a quick look at the landmarks as well. Because generally, by this point in a save, there we go. 2025, Matt Arnold scales down the funding. He has since been replaced. He was elected there in 2026, then he left in 2028. He's been replaced since. The stadium capacity has been increased 6,600 too. So they've done a job in getting that up. I must have missed that on the last screen. Um, I just want to look at um, records. And yeah, Ricky J. Jones is the highest transfer fee paid. And Charlie McNeil, 384000 to Plymouth, the highest sale that they have currently made. Fourth position is the best they've finished so far. Hoping in five years' time they can make it in to at least Skybet League 1. Ideally it will be the Championship. Because then they can have a good 10 year crack. At trying to get into the Premier League. But I just wonder at this moment in time. If they're going to be able to do that in the next 5 years. Skybet League 1 would probably be the best shout. But we're hoping for Skybet League uh, Championship. Sorry. So here we are. July the 1st, 20, 36, 15 years into the future. Uh, training facilities are 3 star. Youth facilities are 3.5. 1 gold star and 1 gold star for the junior coaching and youth recruitment. So that is there. And just underneath, as you can see, Eddie Howe is the manager. 58-year-old Eddie Howe. We have a look, quick look at the managers uh, since you were last with us 5 years ago. Nathan Jones was sacked last we saw. Uh, Stefan Johansson came in for... Pff, just over just over a year, a year and a half, he left Jamie Mackey back as caretaker. 63 days this time, he left. Uh, Jan Songo, just under a year before he got sacked. And Eddie Howe has been there just over two and a half years. He has seen them get promoted to League One in the last five years. They got promoted in the 31-32 season, finished top. They then finished 23rd in Skybet League One, finished 7th. Then another league title, two league titles as you see down here. And recently just finished fifth in Skybet League 1. Let's see how they got on in terms of the playoffs. So Shrewsbury went up. Did they make the final this time? So the semi-finals, they beat Lincoln 5-2 on aggregate to reach the playoff final. And they lost on penalties to Shrewsbury. So they're not a million miles away from the championship. I think the difference is here, if we've been looking at this and... You know, 2036, with 10 years left of this experiment, they'd already be in the championship. They would be in a great position. But right now, it's going to be a little bit of a struggle from here on out. And we're going to have a look next at the transfers. So big news here in that first season. £14.75 million pounds spent. £13 million on Tim Watson from Preston, who is now at Watford. He's a left-back. So they absolutely smashed their transfer budget on this left-back. 
uh, brought him in from Preston for 13 million, sold him for 2.7. This AI has got no clue about anything. Since then, he went for half a million to South End and 1.1 million to Watford. So, Skybet League One, FC United is on to Championship Huddersfield. He's now back in the Championship with Watford um, for this coming season. Played 45 games in Skybet League One. I mean, he did okay, averaged 7.08, 7.05, only played 56 times for the club as well. It's an extraordinary amount of money, especially for a left back who they've lost £10 million on. That's absolutely absurd. They brought in just over half a million that season. 32-33 season, spent £110,000, brought back in £1.1 million. So they got back to their regular way of really, you know, self-sustaining themselves. Brought in 2.8 million that season. That was the sale of Tim Watson. Only spent 325,000 that year. 875,000 pounds spent in the 34-35 season. 245,000 pounds brought back in there. So they've really had some, yeah, sustainability in terms of the transfers. They just seem to have one big transfer every sort of few years. That one where they spent one point. Um, 1 million on Ricky J. Jones, and then this one here where they spent 13 million on Tim Watson. Neither have been a complete success. Both of those should be in the records now. Yeah, Tim Watson just over 13 million pounds, and then the sale of him for 2.654 million pounds to Huddersfield. So he's now the highest transfer fee paid and the highest transfer fee received. Uh, any more records? Fifth in Skybet League One is their best we're going to go all the way down here have a look is there anything that stands out uh 2020 21 season nothing for us most overall goals by a player in the season charlie jolly 24 25 season um and then going down here i mean there's a few players that have been picking up awards in the last few years have they had any good runs most matches without scoring they had in the 2033 March to April there. Um, most matches lost in a row from December 2028 to January 2029. Nearly a whole month's worth there losing matches. So 10 years left to go. Two more visits back to Broadhurst Park. Still has a 6,600 capacity. Um, 2041, 2046. Let's see what they can do. They've got to be in the Championship by 2041. They've just got to be. Otherwise... Does it become a, a failure if they don't make the Premier League? I'm not sure. They've made their way up the leagues. They've done a very decent job. They've still got a good bank balance. £702 million in the bank balance. Predicted to finish 8th in this coming season. So they're not a million miles away from being one of the favourites for promotion. But let's do it. Let's go another five years into the future. Let's see what FC United of Manchester can do. So here we are in 2041. And uh, El Yunisi is manager of FC United of Manchester. Eddie Howe left to become the manager of Northern Ireland. Slightly odd one. Um, not entirely sure what was in it there for him, but he left. El Unissi has took over. He has been at the club just under a year now. Training facilities are three and a half star. Youth facilities up at four. Junior coaching is now two. Youth recruitment has dropped down to half a star. Um, and they're in the Skybet League Championship. Uh, promotion in the 28th, the 38-39 season, sorry. They came second there and they finished 13th and 14th since. Media prediction is 15th, which makes me think that they're not going to be able to get promoted into the Premier League in the next five years. Still got £608 million in the bank balance, so it's not too bad. They still have the money there. They've also won a Papa John's trophy since. We're going to have a quick look at that. Uh, we're going to quickly go to the final. So... They beat Plymouth. I've just gone one too far there. They beat Plymouth on penalties. In what is their first trophy since being a league club? Uh, I've just lost them again. Where are they gone? Here we are. Yeah, so this is their first trophy. They've actually... It's their first actual cup. They've won the league in many different leagues. In three different leagues. Never won a cup competition. That is their first cup competition. And they did that in 2038. Papa John's Trophy win for them. Broadhurst Park is up to 9,152-seat stadium. So they're slowly, slowly increasing that. Probably need it bigger than that, actually, if they're going to be a championship club. Have they been anywhere else in terms of stadium? They're failing financial fair play regularly here. 
over and over again. I'm not sure why, when they've got that amount of money in the bank, why they are having issues with financial fair play, but it seems to be the case. It doesn't look like they've gone to play anywhere else. It looks like they've stayed at... Oh, wait, no, they have moved back to Broadhurst after temporary relocation. So where did they go? They went to the Regional Athletic Stadium, which has a capacity of 6,000 in Manchester. Answers on a postcard? What is it, just a running track? Obviously, there's no picture there. It's just a generic picture that looks a little bit like Craven Cottage. Those two uh, posts there remind me a lot of Craven Cottage. Anyway, getting sidetracked there. So, what have they done in terms of transfers? And the transfer history, oh, there's some big money spent there. We're going to have a quick look at that one. £5.25 million spent on Reese Leg for this upcoming season. Uh, season before, £22.5 million spent. Brought in Anthony Dale for seven and a quarter million. Mike Burgess for three and a half. Jordan McGrath or McGrath, depending on how you want to say it, for £3.4 million. So a lot of money spent there trying to acclimatise to life in the Championship. Season before that, £9.25 million spent. Dale Cook for 3.6. And they've gone from being pretty self-sufficient to having a couple of big spends. £9.75 million spent here, but £7.5 million brought in. They spent the bulk of the money on Joel Fairlamp from Derby, 5.75 million rising to seven. But they saw this guy. Nope, not even going to try. The Galatasaray for 7.25 million pounds. How much did they sign him for? Um, Turkish, 28 year old at the moment. Signed him on a free. Sold him for 7.25 million. I take back everything I said about the AI. Brilliant work from them. Actually, Liverpool signed him for 7.75 million. Uh, spent some time out on loan at Dynamo Kiev and at Preston and played three games for Liverpool after spending just under £8 million. Pounds, loaned him back to Lincoln and then from Liverpool he went to FC United. Spent three years uh, playing what's that, 84 games, scoring 23 goals. He is a striker can play on the wing. So, I mean, not great numbers, but that is a great profit made on this guy here. Uh, Killy Caslin? I'm pretty sure that's not how you say it, but we're going to go with that anyway. Um, so what has that done in terms of records? Tim Watson is still the highest transfer fee paid, £30 million. And yet, yeah, uh, Kili Kuzlazan Kazlan. Ah, you know what I mean. £7.215 million he was sold for to Galatasaray. So one last jump into the future. Hoping for better facilities, hoping for Premier League. I doubt it's going to happen though now, but we're going to do it five more years. Come on, FC United and Manchester. Let's be the first real success of this What If series. I mean, it's been more of a success, but they've had a lower um, division to come from. It isn't like the Paris one where they only had to get promoted in one division. They've come from what would be the seventh, seventh tier up to the second tier. Come on, one more step. Nearly there, FC United and Manchester, let's go five more years. So here we are in 2046, FC United and Manchester, they're in the Skybet Championship. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Firstly, on to the managers. Jason Tindall came back in as caretaker. He has done three caretaker roles. Um, Daniel Soccer was there for a year and a half. He was sacked. Jeremy Pino, there's one for Nath90. He came in as manager. He lasted 336 days before he left. What's he doing now? He's the manager at Everton. So, not too bad. Um, was the under 19 assistant manager at Atletico Madrid. And then FC United matches from January 2045 to December 2045. Yeah, so he, lasted, he came in the January, lasted till the December. Didn't last the full year. And then went on to be the manager of Everton. So... He's having a decent little managerial career. And then after that, Sean McGurk, who's been here for six months pretty much, he, what's he done in terms of his football career? Started at Wigan. He's been at QPR, Leeds, Huddersfield, West Brom, and New England over in America. Played 548 career games, 77 goals, 49 assists. Average of 6.85 for his career. So he's been here like I say, six months. 
We've got to see what they expect of him. Go back to the profile and have a look. The media prediction is still 15. Uh, going to go back and go to stages here. And we'll just get up the last few seasons. So they finished in, where are we looking? 19th in the season, just gone. 12th the season before. 12th the season before that. 12th again. Very consistent. 15th the season before that. So they've been very consistent in what they've been doing. Mid-table championship club. No more than that, it seems to me. 17,793-seater stadium now, FC United Stadium. So when did they move into that? It was built in the year 2043, so I'm guessing that's when they moved into it. Yeah, moved in in June of 2043. Um, in terms of, did they fail any more? No, it doesn't look like it. Youth category was raised to category one there. Um, no more failing of financial fair play. They just these ones down here in Skybet League 1. Since they've been in the Championship, they've been absolutely fine. Have a quick last look at the transfers. There's a lot of money been spent here in the last few years. £20 million spent here. 11 and a half coming back in. Jay Moore from Derby for £7 million. Uh, £4.2 million for Luke Smythe from Wolves. Is he the most? No. Alberto Scotta from Aston Villa for five and three quarter million. Brought in 16 million again though. So they're not having massive net spends. Although there they've spent over 19 million pounds. Uh, Six million pounds on Alan Reid. 5.75 on Oliver Vartdal and Femi Bello from Arsenal for 6.25 million pounds. 27.5 so the amount of money that they've spent you'd have thought they'd be pushing closer towards the playoffs in the championship but they're not doing that 27 and a half million pounds spent here as well 5.5 million on Noel Bargary from Middlesbrough and Fajardo from Millwall as well so considering the money they've spent you'd have thought they would have had a decent crack again into the Premier League and they just haven't quite done it yet having a quick look have they won any more trophies since then they haven't um so I don't know if we put this down as a success or not bank balance in there 407 million so there's still money there to have a go at it if this was to continue and to you know really get into it have a quick look at the edit club details uh Still £10 million in the transfer budget. Wage budget is just down below £2 million as well. No sugar daddy now, of course. Uh, have they got any affiliations? Halifax, Wilston and Borak. Um, feeder team, feeder team, feeder team. So they've got a couple of affiliations as well to get um, some young players in. But I don't know, 25 years and there's not an awful lot to show for it. I mean... Yes, they're a championship club. They've made it up from tier 7 all the way up to tier 2. And they seem pretty steady in tier 2 as well. But just the junior coaching, the youth recruitment, I know it was so bad at the start, but you just thought they would have got that better. Training facilities are at 4. Youth facilities are at 4.5. The reputation's now at 3. I don't know, just thought maybe they'd have a better infrastructure for that push to the Premier League. I do think another 5 years probably would see them at least have a season in the Premier League but they're not the rules 25 years is the rules so here we are in 2046 we're done and dusted FC United Manchester multiple promotions made to the championship that seems to be their limit at the moment multiple managers as well over the past 25 years decent looking stadium uh, just under 18,000 the FC United Stadium things are looking good I mean I don't know I'm not going to search back through their schedule if they've played any games against Manchester United, Manchester City, Liverpool, Leeds here as we look down at the fierce rivals. But nonetheless, they've done a great job. Um, and before we go, we're just going to have a quick look at some of the big competitions. And see who's been winning the Premier League, the FA Cup, the Champions League. We'll have a quick look at that before we end the episode. So we're going to quickly shoot through some of these. Firstly, the Premier League. Man City, Chelsea, Arsenal, Chelsea. No real surprises here. Liverpool, Chelsea, Liverpool, Liverpool and Leicester. Four years in a row have absolutely dominated the last four years. That is fantastic. What's happened there? Has anything happened that's made them? Premier League, Carabao Cup, Community Shield, Premier League champions. Tom Davies scales down the funding there. 
Um, let's have a quick look at what they're doing. I mean, they've got a fair bit of money there. Back end sugar daddy there as well. Europa League runners up. So, next lead to the Carabao Cup. Past winners Chelsea, Leicester, Liverpool, Man United, Chelsea, Villa, Tottenham, Crystal Palace, Villa again twice. Couple of little surprises in there. FA Cup, Arsenal, Man City, Wolves, Leicester, uh, Crystal Palace winning another cup there so a couple of surprises you you wolves your crystal palace probably more of the surprises there having a quick look at the champions league holders of real madrid real madrid Bar uh, barcelona barcelona have won it back to back there Bayern munich liverpool psg real madrid barcelona real madrid having a spell of dominance there four years on the spin psg three years on the spin there arsenal won it in 27 28 that's uh Somewhat of a shock. Down to the Europa League. Leipzig, Sevilla, Arsenal, Tottenham, Marseille, Sociedad, Atalanta are there. Arsenal again, Newcastle, Man City, Bruce Dortmund, Liverpool. Actually, go have a quick look at what? Oh, Newcastle, £50 million in the red. So, some issues there. What have they done in the past? I don't want to look down here. Premier League, as high as third. That's about the highest that they've ever been still at St James's Park so they didn't do a lot with the funding that they get in this game um, and then we're going to go back quickly look at the Conference League I'm not overly bothered by it but just see if there's anything there Espanyol, Newcastle, Kiev, Sporting, Atalanta, Palace again with another trophy Southampton, Arsenal, Spurs I missed, Hoffenheim, Nice, Newcastle, Leeds, Rangers Villa won it there as well, Man United and Crystal Palace so I can't remember what leagues are loaded up. I don't know if I just loaded up England. So clearly the English team's having a um, having a foothold and a bit of a stranglehold over some of the European competitions. We'll have a quick look at the World Cup as well, see what's happened there. Portugal, France, Italy, France, England won it in 2026. Back down Spain in 2022. And then oh, that's all the qualifiers. So see if we can find the European Championships hold of Spain Spain England France France Germany Spain and then Italy obviously won it in real life in 2021 so there's a few different winners if both competitions England winning both as well which is very very impressive uh, the final actually Spain beat England in the final uh, to win that I don't know why I've clicked on this because I'm not going to know any of the players that are around Steven Gerrard is the England manager though that's one thing that one person that I'd know, 66 year old Steven Gerrard, who, have a look, what did he do, he took charge of Rangers, um, went to Villa, stayed at Villa until 2028 maybe, can we get up his career stats for management, um, I suppose we could go this far, so he was at Liverpool, so he was at Villa until 2028 till he was sacked. They won the uh, Carabao Cup in 2027. So he was sacked he, yeah, 19, 20 months after winning Villa's first trophy in God knows how many years that would have been by that point. Probably probably 30 years by that point. Yeah, 96 when it's probably 30 years unless there was something else in between. Then he went to Southampton, got sacked inside a year. No, sorry, inside two, just inside two years. Then went to Brighton, got relegated from Brighton, left, went to Wolves, got promoted from the championship at Wolves. Then he went to Liverpool in 2036, won the FA Cup, won the Premier League, won the Carabao Cup, won the Premier League again, then got sacked in 2039 and then went to Inter, Italian Serie A, Sorry, I'm getting carried away with the career of Steven Gerrard here. Uh, Super Coppa winners, Coppa Italia winners. Entered the Hall of Fame in Italy as well as in England as well. Super Coppa winner. And then the, the opportunity came up to take the England job and he took it. 66-year-old, well, 65 at the time, Steven Gerrard decided to resign from Inter Milan, take on the England job. He has been an absolutely fantastic manager. Let's Can we get... Can you find his trophies? His biography? Uh, I mean, you can see it all there if you want to pause it and read it. 
won a number of trophies in his history. I just I can't think for the life of me. There's his history. Hmm. Information. He's got so many favoured personnel as well. Um. For the life of me, I cannot work out where. Oh, this is what I want, isn't it? Yeah, right. So, I don't know what button I press there. Did I just press? I'm not sure what button I press there. So he has overall career stats: eight cups, seven leagues, one promotion, and one relegation. Not a bad little career. Uh, won all twelve of his games. As England manager, in he's just under a year in charge. Highest nationality ranking of four, highest nation ranking of seven. Done decent. Uh, highest transfer fee received. Uh, Diego Marquez, one hundred sixty nine million. I've got really sidetracked here on the career of Steven Gerrard. Anyway, we've seen who's won what. This got a little bit away from me there. I got really sidetracked by that. If you enjoyed today's video, if you've enjoyed me getting sidetracked by the career of Steven Gerrard, if you'd like to see who else, um did stuff throughout this uh, save leave a comment on the video i'll gladly come back have a look and let you know what that person did during this 25 year period but as for that that is the end of the episode today we'll be back again tomorrow it is episode three of the twitch save of the uh, um the galactico rebuild sorry uh, me and nathan 90 there that'll be back and that'll be back every sunday from here on out like i say it's been a little bit of a weird time but we're back and we're raring to go and like I say, thanks for watching. Please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.